In the dark chapters of history, few stories are as chilling as the reign of the Templars. These remarkable individuals, known as the Knights Templar, were a religious military order with a mission to safeguard Christian pilgrims during the Crusades. But as it turns out, protection wasn't the only thing the Templars were responsible for. In fact, the Templars were one of the most violent factions in the world and were responsible for some of the most brutal punishments in human history. Blasphemy and Corruption Let's start by examining the relentless punishments inflicted upon the Templars for their refusal to conform. King Philip IV of France and Pope Clement V accused them of heresy, blasphemy, and corruption, all driven by their insatiable greed for the Templars' wealth and power. During the trials, the Templars, subjected to unbearable torture, confessed to a range of sinful and criminal behaviors. These shocking false confessions included spitting on the cross, engaging in forbidden sexual acts among members, denying Christ, and worshipping false idols. The dark saga of their arrest, torture, and eventual execution by burning at the stake stretched across several agonizing years, leaving an unforgettable history. The Birth and Rise of the Templars So let's travel back in time to uncover the origins of this infamous order. In the 12th century, during the chaotic era of the Crusades, the Templars emerged as a religious military order with a noble mission – to protect Christian pilgrims on their sacred journeys to the Holy Land. In the 12th century, holy wars erupted in the Middle East, driven by the urgent need to aid the Byzantine Empire against the invading Seljuk Turks. In response to this, a group of nine French knights, led by Hugh de Payens and Godfrey de Saint-Omer, founded the Templars in 1119. They took up residence in the former Temple of Solomon and named themselves the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon. The Templars were different from other religious orders of that time, as they enjoyed special privileges and followed strict rules. In 1129, at the Council of Troyes, Pope Honorius II granted them autonomy and authority over other orders through a papal bull. As a result, they enjoyed special privileges. They didn't have to pay taxes or follow the rules of the church. Their loyalty was solely to the Pope. Under the guidance of Bernard de Clairvaux's teachings, the Templars embraced a life of poverty and chastity. They wore white mantles adorned with red crosses, symbolizing their commitment to courage, loyalty, humility, and modesty. They renounced personal possessions, avoided vices like gambling and drinking, and devoted themselves to prayer several times a day. Warriors, Crusades, and Triumphs The Templars were renowned warriors and brilliant strategists. They fearlessly fought in numerous battles during the Crusades, defending Jerusalem against Muslim invasions led by figures like Zengi. They even joined campaigns to expand and reclaim Crusader states, such as their involvement in the Second Crusade with King Louis VII of France and King Conrad III of Germany. However, they faced a major defeat at the Battle of Hattin, where Saladin emerged victorious and captured Jerusalem. But the Templars didn't give up. They joined the Third Crusade, which eventually secured a truce with Saladin allowing Christian pilgrims to visit the holy city. Their dedication remained strong until 1291, when the Mamluks overpowered them and took control of their last stronghold in Acre. This marked the end of the Crusader states. Throughout their history, the Templars showcased bravery and resilience, defending their cause in the face of adversity. Their military prowess and unwavering commitment made them a force to be reckoned with during the Crusades, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to captivate our imaginations today. The Fall of the Templars The Templars found themselves in a grave situation, accused of heresy, blasphemy, and corruption. Their dire circumstances were set in motion by King Philip IV of France and Pope Clement V. King Philip IV owed a great debt to the Templars for their financial aid in his military campaigns, but instead of gratitude, he aimed to wipe out their power. Seizing the opportunity, he influenced Pope Clement V to issue a papal bull, decreeing the arrest and trial of every Templar. 
the tables were turned on these noble knights as the very authorities they once trusted became their enemies. On October 13, 1307, a shocking event unfolded, forever marking the history of the Templars. In a surprise assault, hundreds of Templars in France were captured, setting the stage for a grim chapter in their story. What followed was a horrifying ordeal orchestrated by the Inquisition. The captured knights endured unimaginable torture, as the Inquisition employed a range of merciless methods to extract confessions. From stretching victims on the rack to using the strappato hanging technique, the Iron Maiden, water torture, and branding with hot irons, the Templars faced relentless torment. Under the excruciating weight of physical and psychological strain, the Templars confessed to heinous acts they were accused of committing or witnessing. These false accusations spread like wildfire, accusing the knights of spitting on the cross during initiation rites, engaging in forbidden sexual acts with their comrades, and even demons. The accusations went further, suggesting that they worshipped idols and denied Christ. The diabolic things these confessions revealed sent shockwaves through society. But were these confessions coerced? Were they fabricated to serve a hidden agenda? The Dark Confessions They were said to have killed innocent people, betrayed allies, and extorted money. Notorious events like the massacre of the assassins, the treason of Gerard de Ritfort, and the fraud of Renaud de Vichy tarnished their legacy. Rumors even circulated about their involvement in sorcery, alchemy, and possessing demonic artifacts like the Baphomet, an enigmatic idol. These accusations reveal a darker side to the Templars, raising questions about their actions and motives. But were they truly guilty of these diabolic things, or were they victims of a smear campaign? However, it's important to recognize that many historians and scholars strongly defend the innocence of the Templars. They argue that the confessions extracted from them were coerced and therefore unreliable. These confessions were often based on rumors, hearsay, and false testimonies, leading to inconsistencies and contradictions. Some believe that the interrogators misinterpreted or misunderstood certain confessions due to their limited knowledge or personal biases. Furthermore, there are suggestions that the Templars adopted unique beliefs and practices influenced by the diverse cultures and religions they encountered in the Middle East. These practices might have involved the irreverence of revered relics like the Holy Grail or the Shroud of Turin. Ritualistic acts such as spitting on the cross or engaging in specific physical contact with the Grand Master have also been speculated. The Templars faced trials that lasted for years, yielding different outcomes and sentences depending on the location and circumstances. Papal commissioners and local inquisitors oversaw these trials, basing their judgment on the confessions and testimonies provided by the Templars. These trials unfolded in several countries, including France, England, Spain, Italy, Germany, and Cyprus. The diverse locations added further complexity to the Templars' legal battles and their ultimate fates. Consequently, the Templars faced diverse fates. Some were acquitted or pardoned, others imprisoned or exiled, and some executed or burned at the stake. During the trials, some Templars tragically lost their lives or gave in to the unbearable conditions, renouncing their previous confessions. However, there were also those who stayed true, firmly asserting their innocence and unwavering loyalty to the Order. The Legacy and Secrets of the Templars Countless Templars met their demise through torture, imprisonment, burning at the stake, or beheading. Jacques de Molay, the final Grand Master, defiantly defended the Order until the end, cursing his accusers moments before being burned alive on March 18, 1314. Although numerous Templars suffered these unimaginable fates, some managed to escape or go into hiding. The enduring legacy and enigma surrounding the Templars have sparked countless legends, myths, and secrets concerning their relics and treasures. However, in the middle of this tragic tale, a glimmer of mystery emerges. Some Templars manage to escape or vanish into the shadows, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire countless legends, myths about their hidden treasures, 
Speculation suggests that these brave individuals may have safeguarded cherished relics and treasures, such as the Holy Grail or the Ark of the Covenant, concealing them in undisclosed locations or entrusting them to other guardians. Additionally, the influence and connections of the Templars have been linked to other secret societies, including the Freemasons or the Illuminati, who claim to have inherited their knowledge and traditions.